so many individuals, or I should say many white men, might feel that they are being replaced by minorities. It is what is referred to as the great replacement. Or in this article, it talks about how the replacement theory went mainstream on the political right. And the reason being is because when you look at the way that the left operates, the left is basically pulling from all of these Hispanic countries, right? They're pulling everybody from Mexico and from all the countries to the south, and they're bringing them into the country so that they can work. Now, of course, these individuals are obviously willing to do uh, cheap labor. That's basically the point, is a lot of these jobs are not very high paying jobs. And so Americans are used to a very high standard of living by comparison, especially to many other nations. And so you obviously need, I mean, this is just, it's just a plantation. And so you have the people who the government serves, and even though regardless of whether you think that or not, when the people call for uh, you know, healthcare is a right, right? The government provides healthcare. When the people say, you know, uh, education is a right, the government pays for for that. Uh, the masks, the jabs, right? Just look, everything, everything is a right. Now, abortion is a right, primarily paid by the government. So from the government standpoint, this is what the people want. And the politician's job is to get reelected. So, but people on the right, or I should say, more the individuals who are more conservative less reliant on the government more self-reliant these people will obviously feel that they're being replaced by minorities because the jobs that are available don't suit them in terms of the pay whereas many other people want to enjoy the high standard of living but the only way that the government is able to provide that is one through printing and two via semi-slave labor right there's been numerous companies, numerous you know, uh, articles that have come out talking about Apple and Nike and all these different companies that utilize child labor in all these other foreign countries. And it's like, well, how else is the government going to provide what the American people keep asking for? Right? If you're a politician and you want to get reelected, which is your sole purpose of being in office, is to get reelected so that you can live off of the system. The only way that you're able to do that is by giving the people what they want, not by giving the people what they don't want. The problem is the government always has to find ways to trick the people because the people don't want to pay for anything. That's why they can't raise taxes. And they can't cut spending. That, those, are the two, those are two things that are never on the table. There is no politician who can make it into office on the fact that we're going to cut spending. We're paying too much for whatever program it is, right? Se over 75% of everything that the government pays in terms of the annual budget is welfare. But the American people, of course, always state that this isn't the fact that the government doesn't do anything for them. Yada, yada, yada. Same story. So the point of the quote-unquote replacement that is happening is primarily to bring in workers. And since Americans aren't having children, the only place that America can pull from is from the South. Because Canada has the same problem. Most of these Western countries all have the same problem. They're not having children and they're not replacing their demographics. And so in, in essence, the West is dying. And so how do you in essence replenish your ranks well you have to you have to pull immigrants into the country hence why the border is wide open but donald trump couldn't do that and so you have the left and the right they both work together right? it's just like when you watch like old school wrestling right and then you see them you know fighting in the ring and then they're having you know dinner later that night it's just all theater and it's and it's what the people understand people understand that it's all theater but at the end of the day, each side wants what they want. Now, the primary problem is the welfare. And that stemmed largely from giving women the right to vote. Because initially, women require a man to go out and get resources. And then to bring those resources back home to share them with his family. And so the trade-off was sex and children for resources and protection. And that was the social uh, agreement, the social contract between men and women. And so when men in the early 1900s gave women the right to vote, they, in, in essence, tore up the social contract. Because now women make up a larger voting base than men. 
So since the politicians only purpose is to do what the voters want, when the voters ask for more welfare, that's what the people get. That's basically what the past hundred years in America shows, the expansion of welfare. And a lot of that started once universal suffrage was introduced via giving women the right to vote. That's why men are like, well, it doesn't, it doesn't stink. You're strong and independent, then why do you need my money? Because it's fucking resources. Why would they not want your resources and the resources that the government is going to give them? Because there's no one there to check the government. See, the problem is, is the men. The men have grown weak. And as a result, the women submit to the government. That's why women don't want to submit to men. Because women realize the hierarchy very quickly. And they realize that the government, in essence, has the authority. And the government doesn't listen to the men. And the men don't even try to push back against the government. And this is why the only way for the government to be able to replenish the people and to get workers into the country is that they have to pull from patriarchal communities, like, for example, Mexico and all the countries to the south. All those communities, all those countries to the south of, of America are patriarchal lifestyles. That's why when all these American men, they go into places in Latin America or to other countries where they don't have social programs, the women are very accommodating. They're very friendly. They're very feminine. And the men are like, what's going on here? There's like something in the water down here? Like these women are very different from the women that I'm, I'm, I'm used to in my own country. They're fat in my country. You got all these skinny women and they're so nice. It's because they live in a patriarchal lifestyle and they require the men to bring resources. And so the social contract remains intact. But in countries where you have socialism, that isn't the case. Especially where America, in essence, is the top dog, right? The world reserve currency. So that they can sit here and they can print all these dollars and artificially prop people's lifestyles higher than, the, than they really are. But it's all going to come to an end eventually. And eventually you'll either see a return to patriarchy or you'll end up seeing tyranny to a scale that hasn't been seen in America in its history. Because those are the only two conclusions of the route that the country is going. And it's primarily because this is what men voted for. Men voted to give women the right to vote. And they realized really quickly we don't have to take care of them. The government will do that. They voted for the expansion of welfare through quantitative easing, especially the baby boomers. They sat there and they voted for all this stuff. Everything is free. They were like, free money, make it rain. The government going to make it rain. And then now our generation and the subsequent generations that are existing now are the ones that are going to pay for it. And it's all related to welfare and giving the women the right to vote. Women require resources and either the government, either daddy government is going to give it to them or they're going to have to deal with a man, but a man has more requirements. You got to stay fit. You got to be feminine. You got to stay in shape, right? You got to be nice. You got to cook clean. Like those are the basics. Government don't even require the basics. Government doesn't require them to cook, clean, do none of that stuff. All they got to do is vote. That's it. Just vote for the continued expansion of welfare and everything will be okay between you and me. And that's just the gist of it. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. Leave your comment below and I'll check you next time.